Drops back to throw. Dumps the screen to McCleskey, wow. who's hit hard. Coughs up the football. Wow. Unloading deep down field, and Franklin makes a tremendous catch! guys, you made history, man. You made history. This hasn't been done in Tulane in 67 years. 67 years. And 50 years from now, you guys will remember this, but I don't know when it's ever going to happen again. But you know, more than that, you brought a sense of pride back to Tulane, a sense of unity. And you've made us all winners because you guys are winners. Everybody associated with Tulane University, everybody associated, thank you from the bottom of their heart. God bless all of you guys. You are terrific. In the fall of 1998, at the annual scrimmage in Covington, these young men were not thinking about history. They were just practicing to win a football game, the first game of the season. And it all started with attitude. Now, it's the attitude you've got towards yourself and going to make play. Because this is the play, this is the way you see who, who, who the playmakers are. Do you want the ball on third down? You want them to run your way on third down. You want them to block. You want them to run behind you as a blocker or as a defensive lineman or like you want them to run at you. And it ended with this young coach winning a bowl game that no one expected this Tulane team to even be a part of six months earlier. Little did they think then that these headlines would make history. Finally, chaps. Finishing touch. Perfect. This team. This schedule and this season would break all sports records and, yes, history. For it was and is a perfect season to remember. The season began with a Conference USA showdown against humanitarian bowl champion Cincinnati Bearcats on a cool Labor Day weekend. Tulane had handily beaten the Bearcats the previous two years and looked to continue that mastery on this opening Saturday night. This Tulane team ran the ball, passed the ball, and defended the ball. It soon became evident that this Green Wave team would use the pass to set up the run and establish a well-balanced attack that would see Tulane score five of the first six times it had the ball. It was a win that would define the season. A dynamic offense orchestrated by quarterback Sean King using the run and pass to score early and often. And an opportunistic defense which made the big plays when the game was in doubt. Sophomore running back Tony Converse grabbed this 41-yard pass from King and ran untouched into the end zone for the season's first two-lane touchdown. Senior running back Jamaican D'Artez set up three more touchdowns with long runs like this 36-yard gallop as he compiled a career-high 195 yards rushing on 21 carries that propelled Tulane to a 52-14 third-quarter lead that the wave stretched into a 52-34 victory. The following week, the remnants of Tropical Storm Francis had reached Dallas, but even that wasn't enough to stop a Tulane offense that played with the force of a Category 5 hurricane. Tulane scored on two of its first three possessions, including this 94-yard touchdown pass from Sean King to Juwan Dawson, setting a record for the longest pass play in Tulane history. Then, with Tulane leading 17-0, John Wilson downed a Brad Hill 48-yard punt at the SMU one-yard line. After three and out, Tulane's David Dorsey rushed in to block this punt and recovered it for a Green Wave score and a 24 to nothing lead. Oh, 
Tulane stretched its lead to 31 to nothing late in the third quarter and then held on for a 31-21 win to open its season 2-0 for the first time since 1975. And now it was on to New Orleans for the home opener and Hurricane George. Anticipation and fear were in the air. But Tulane, like the city, was prepared to win and to go 3-0. Early in the game, Tulane quarterback Sean King broke his left wrist. Playing with pain from a wrist that even King didn't know was broken, the senior quarterback was almost perfect in the game, completing 17 of his 22 pass attempts for 235 yards and four touchdowns, setting a whirlwind pace to become Tulane's all-time passing leader. King connected with senior wide receiver P.J. Franklin on this 78-yard TV play, which would become the fourth longest in Tulane history. The Tulane defense continued to be a force with three interceptions and one fumble recovery. Tulane 42, Navy 24. The wave was 3-0. And now, with Hurricane George moving to Mississippi, Conference USA preseason favorite Southern Mississippi was on its way to the Dome. The nation was now taking notice of the Green Wave. Tulane was ranked 25th, and for the first time in team history, two consecutive home games were being offered to a national cable audience. This was to become a game of firsts. The first game with black pants, first time playing for the Conference USA lead, and the first time Tulane had faced a big game situation since the 80s. It would also be the first time that the Tulane defense would outshine its offense by forcing Southern Miss into six turnovers. Four of those interceptions with Alfonso Roundtree returning this pick 59 yards for a score to give the wave a 7 0 lead. At the 30, 25, he'll go untouched into the end zone. They won't catch him today. Alfonso Roundtree, touchdown, Tulane. Late in the first half, a Tellius Carr interception gave the offense great field position at the Eagles' 39 yard line. Eight plays later, Jamaican Dartez powered in from the one-yard line, and Tulane led 14 to nothing. The icing on the cake came on the opening drive of the second half, as Tulane drove 80 yards on nine plays, capped off by this Sean King 35-yard touchdown pass to P.J. Franklin for a 21 to nothing lead. The defense took over, holding USM to just 325 total yards, 135 yards rushing, preserving a 21 to 7 victory, sole possession of first place in Conference USA, and a 4 and 0 record. The Wave was about to enjoy a well-deserved week off, but little did they know, when they returned to the field, they would be in for the fight of their lives. Louisville at Tulane. The game was not looking good for Tulane. Our quarterback with his wrist in a cast for the second consecutive week, and the opposing quarterback, Chris Redman, scouted as a future NFL star. Louisville saw Tulane as the team to beat and be the spoiler in the Conference USA race. Leadership begins with knowing that you can win a game at any time. In fact, Tulane trailed three times in the first half, but kept battling back to eventually take a 21-16 halftime lead. Trickery, deceit, and deception produced the Okie Dokie, a pass to the fullback Okie Woods coming out of the backfield that went 13 yards for a score and a 28-19 Tulane lead but the homecoming crowd of 26,000-plus would have to sit on the edge of their seats as Louisville mounted an impressive comeback. Trailing by six, the Cardinals drove the length of the field in the final minute to the Tulane three-yard line. With nine seconds to go, Tulane forced the Louisville quarterback to roll out and throw high and incomplete, wasting six seconds off the clock. It all came down to one play. Three seconds remaining. Tulane will win or lose on this play. 
Redmond has him at the line. All out blitz by the Green Wave. Redmond throws. It's knocked down. Almost intercepted by Tim Carter. Tulane wins. Tulane wins and remains undefeated on this 1998 season. This was perhaps the watershed game of the season and another big step on the road to history. Tulane was 5-0 and moved up to 22nd nationally. Tulane stepped out of conference for games against Rutgers and USL the next two weeks. Under the beautiful skies of a Piscataway, New Jersey sunny afternoon, Tulane showcased its high-powered, fast-break, no-huddle offense to the Eastern Seaboard media. 52 points later, the Wave had moved to number 18 in the rankings and gained the respect of sports writers that shaped the opinion of the American public. Sean King completed 23 of 27 for 320 yards and four touchdowns. Tulane scored each of its six first-half possessions, and the Wave rolled up 510 total yards and coasted to a 52-24 win, and Tulane's 6-0 start was the best since 1949. The next week at home against Southwestern Louisiana brought even more of the same. Tulane's 72 points and 706 total yards was the second most in Tulane school history. Sean King passed for 380 yards and rushed for 28 more to account for 408 yards total offense as the Green Wave scored on 10 of its final 13 game possessions to roll up a 72-20 blowout of USL. The Wave was 7-0 and climbed to 15th in the nation. My, oh my, who would have thought Tulane 7-0? Seven games into the season, every Tulane opponent now wanted to steal the Waves' thunder by any means and crush the team's hopes of an unbeaten season. The Wave jumped on top early, with Sean King running, passing, and even catching for positive yardage, leading the Wave to touchdowns on their first three possessions. King hit on 27 of 38 passes for 285 yards and four touchdowns. King and Tony Converse complemented Tulane's aerial display with a ground force that netted 204 total yards. Converse accounting for 119, King 92. In short, the wave was unstoppable, leading 41-10 after three quarters, coasting to win number eight, 41 to 31. November 14, 1998, West Point, New York. The 14th ranked Green Wave was ready to battle the long gray line for a share of their first conference championship since 1949. The Tulane high-powered offense was pitted against the Army option attack, a matchup that would prove to be a long day for both defenses. This 43-yard Juwan Dawson TD catch was one of three first-half touchdowns for the Wave but Army kept pace to tie the score at halftime, 21-21. After five lead changes, Tulane's defense stormed Army's front line. Brent Timmons delivering this devastating blow. Sammy Knight recovered the fumble, and Tulane's defensive enthusiasm ignited this explosive Sean King pass to Jawan Dawson. In the shotgun, looking into the end zone for Jawan Dawson. He'll lob one. Dawson's got it. Touchdown, Tulane! Tulane never looked back and rolled to a 49-35 victory, a number 12 ranking, and a share of the Conference USA title. Against Army, Sean King ran for three scores and threw for three more and became only the fourth player in NCAA history to throw for 300 and rush for 100 yards in the same game. but I want y'all to see it because it's going to look better than that. It'll look better than that. Hey. We'll make it. Hey. Hey. We're going to, hey. I'll get what you 
seniors, we'll make it look good. I promise you. We'll make it look good. Sports writers quote the old adage, it's sometimes better to be lucky than good. This year, Tulane was both. And never was it more evident than in the 10th game of the year, a game that could give Tulane an undefeated conference slate and the outright title in Conference USA. But it wouldn't be easy. Houston jumped on top early and stayed there for the better portion of the first half. Then came the play that typified Tulane's miracle season. Just under six minutes to go in the first half of play. At the 39-yard line of Houston, first and 10 for Tulane. King in the shotgun, fakes the handoff, throws to John Wilson, falls bobbled, grabbed out of the air by Kerwin Cook. He'll run down the sideline all the way into the end zone. Touchdown, Tulane! That ball fluttered off the wings of Angels into the hands of Kerwin Cook. It's a miracle. See, I saw the ball in the air, and God sent one of his angels down, and they were flapping his wings with the ball, see, and when the current says, it's not. <laughs> it's just the grace of God. After a Houston fumble and two-lane recovery, King lobbed a rainbow into the right corner of the end zone, and Adrian Burnett leaped up and made this highlight film circus catch for six. Tulane had scored 14 points in just 23 seconds to take control at 17-10. But the exclamation point occurred midway through the third quarter. With a bit of divine intervention, Sean King turned a muffed snap that became a lucky bounce into a spectacular play for six more. Loose ball, scooped up, still on his feet, comes for the end zone, touchdown! The touchdown iced the victory, clinching the undisputed 1998 Conference USA Championship. Bedlam and celebration ruled as the Tulane players shared the victory with their fans, as every fan knew that this would be a perfect season to remember. Following the game, Tulane received an invitation to the Liberty Bowl. It was 10-0 and 1-0 to go for the 11th ranked Green Wave. Congratulations on a terrific year, miraculous miracle season. This is your official invitation to come up for the 40th anniversary Liberty Bowl. And we want to extend that to President Cowan and to Coach Bowden here. That we invite you to come play Coach Green to Tulane Greenway to Memphis to play on the center. There was little time to celebrate. Just five days later, on Thanksgiving night, Tulane would try for their first undefeated season since 1931 by hosting Louisiana Tech. Before almost 40,000 in the Superdome, Tulane scored on every first half possession to take a 35 to 16 halftime lead, rolling to a 63 to 30 victory. Tulane rushed for 303 and passed for 330 more with Sean King on target, hitting 19 of his 26 passes and three touchdowns. King also ran for 92, but it was Tony Converse responding with his third 100-yard-plus effort in the last four games, grinding out 182 yards that kept Tech's defense at bay. The regular season was over and perfect. Tulane was now ranked 10th in the nation, undefeated, 11-0, and, and could make history by becoming the first Tulane team ever to win 12 games in a season. Tulane was second in the nation in scoring offense, fourth in total offense, and 13th in passing offense. Sean King had become the NCAA's all-time leader in passing efficiency 
and ironically would defend that title against the school known as a cradle for quarterbacks. BYU former QB greats held three of the top five efficiency ratings. Memphis, Tennessee, home of Elvis, Beale Street, Barbecue, the Peabody Ducks, and the Liberty Bowl. New Year's Eve, 1998, 12.30 p.m., game time. The Tulane Green Wave senses history in the making, and their new, young coach was prepared to take them there in style. The Chris Selfo style. Focused, hard-hitting, aggressive offensive attacks, and strong defensive performances. This team was to make history with the entire nation watching. And Coach Selfo knew that this team needed to show everyone, fans and critics alike, that this was a team for all seasons. The Tulane offense struggled early, showing signs of a five-week layoff. It was Tulane's defense that proved to be the playmaker. Late in the first quarter, when Michael Jordan intercepted a BYU aerial and returned it 79 yards for a score. Federick. Picked off! Michael Jordan! He's 30! He's 10! He'll score! 79 yards! The Tulane defense turned in their best performance since the Southern Miss game, holding the vaunted BYU rushing game to just 54 yards. Tulane's offense got on track when Sean King found Kerwin Cook for six. First and ten for Tulane, King of the shotgun, rolls right, stops, uncorks a bomb for Kerwin Cook, who makes it over the shoulder catch, 15, 10, 5, go, touchdown, Tulane, the Green Wave are running away from BYU. And this Sean King run put the icing on the cake. The Tulane quarterback rushed for 109 and passed for 276 more. And by game's end, Sean had established himself as the king in Memphis. The undefeated Tulane Green Wave, the first Tulane team ever to win 12 games in one season, a number seven ranking in both polls, and Liberty Bowl champions of 1998. The Tulane Green Wave, 1998, a dream season and a perfect season to remember. Just a feeling and emotion and the sense of like a joy that you can sense in people associated with us. I mean, they come around and it's just like whatever was going wrong in their life, you know, for a split second they forget about it. And they just think, wow, I think you should never put a cap on what kind of success you think you can have. Especially, you know, as Philippians says, and you say, I can do all things through Christ. So when Christ is a part of your life, you know, the sky's the limit to what you can accomplish.